if you want to take the Bible style, turn with me to Old Testament book of Numbers. Old Testament book of Numbers. I want us to look at chapter 13. in on verses 30 through 33. Old Testament book Numbers chapter 13 verses 30 through 33 when you have it say amen. I'll be reading from the the English Standard Version of the Bible, so follow along with me in your own translation. Verse number 30 said, But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. In verse 31, And then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. So they walked to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land to which we have gone to spy out is a land that is filled with giants. And what they saw there, I'm paraphrasing and putting it in my own word, was big tall giants, and we are like grasshoppers unto them. Let me pull your attention quickly back to verse number 31. And then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. If I could tag a title to our text this morning, it would simply be, Yes, We Can. Yes, We Can. And Father, I pray for clarity today because I know your spirit is already with us. Give us a heart now that we may receive. Give us ears that we may hear. And give us eyes that we may see. In Jesus' name, Amen. Yes, we can. In 2008, there was a title name that swept our load of excitement and emotion. People were crying and people could not believe what their eyes were seeing. And I remember my mother giving me a phone call, Googling for the phone, and saying words like, I never thought I would see this day come. She says, I remember my grandma. She, she says, I remember my mom and my dad and, my, my, and, and her mom and her dad were saying that this day would never come in American history. And I remember there standing on the, 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 the campus of Oakwood University where, where students were running out of their homes and they was, they was yelling and shouting and crying and saying, we cannot believe what our eyes can see. And I remember watching and, and, and looking and, and I'm watching these students run out as I'm on the phone with my mom. And I'm like, it's the same type of excitement that my mom is, is displaying on the phone. And, and I'm watching these students crying out and, 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 and just yelling for excitement, saying, God has heard the cries of his people. And, and, and not only this spirit just resonated within the United States, but this spirit went all around the world, even on the continent of Africa, where people were rejoicing, they was, they was happy, they were shouting, they could not believe what their eyes were seeing. And, and I remember, I remember taking my seat and turning on the TV there in Chicago, watching the, border, the 44th president of the United States elect President Barack Obama was elected to serve this country, the first African-American president. And this slogan that he used for the campaign, yes, we can. And if you remember that, everywhere he would go all around this country, we would hear that, yes, we can. Those words were pregnant with possibilities and truth because what President Obama was saying and what he was trying to say to the people, the only way we're going to get things out, we have to learn how to 
work together. Have I got a witness here? But it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican. President Obama was saying, if we're going to make this thing happen right, we have to learn to work together. And that's why his spoken was packed with power, because he was saying, yes, we can. And what he was saying is all truly is that he, one man cannot get the job done. I don't care how many degrees you have, I don't care how much education you have, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care where you live, I don't care what your address is, I don't care what kind of car you have. But he was saying, look, I, I know who I am, but I need everybody on my team. And so what he was saying is, look here, y'all, yes, we can get the job done if we will just only work together. Y'all remember that, right? Some of you probably was crying. Some of you probably was shocked when we first seen this thing take place. But that resonated with me. The president was saying, we can't get this thing. I can't do it by myself. I need everybody on board to get this thing done. And he said, yes, we can. And as we reflect and go back down the road of his presidency, we definitely can see that we got some things done. Come on, say amen. Not because he was the president, because he learned how to work with people of all race and all nationality. They all came together and did the job together. Come on, say amen, everybody. Amen. So what I'm saying to you today, Ephesus, as we are prepared to move forward in 2019, yes, we can. We can move forward. We can do what God has called us to do. We, 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 we can we can tag out our dreams and keep on marching with the order of God before us. So here we arrive in our text, and we, we find the children of Israel now they, they just have come out of the wilderness, and God has been promising them that this promised land belongs to them. God has walked them with them through the wilderness. God has shown them something mighty and strong. God has shown them who he is. And God has walked with the children of Israel. God has showed them, look man, I got some power that y'all have never seen. Y'all remember the story back at the Red Sea? He just parted the Red Sea. And watch this, these same people that we see here in Numbers have walked on dry ground. They have seen the mighty hand of God move. They have seen what God can do. And now we are at a point in our text where we find that God is telling Moses, Moses, now the promised land belongs to you. Get the children together, Moses. If you go back and read this in context, in, in Numbers 13, you will find that God tells Moses, Moses, I need you to get a captain from every tribe of Israel to go stop the land. Right. Now, you got to see this because God, man, God knows how to lead, doesn't he? God knows what he's doing here. God, God wanted Moses to, to go out and find those people that got expertise and, and that got that knowledge they know how to get out. And if you go back and read it, you will see that. And so here they are, they, they go over to this land. And, and I can see now Joshua saying, man, exactly what God said, we see it. And for you with milk and honey. And, and I can see Caleb saying, man, you can see the size of these grapes. And wow, man, God, God had promised us this. And, and I can see the rest of the ten just at all. Oh, and they're just looking around in the land. And, and they're saying to themselves, man, this is good. This is good. God has said we can possess this, but something happened. And instead of them moving on the command of God, and if you go back to up to number 13, you will see that God already told Moses, Moses, the land is yours. Oh, 
diamonds. See, strong people, they try to see all of this stuff over in that land, but that's not what God told them. God says the land belongs to you. Now, 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 now mind you, you gotta see this, I gotta take the picture, because, because God has been walking with them. He's been talking with them. He has been showing them who he is and what he can do. Right? God has proved himself to the children of Israel. So there's no way, you know, by the time they, they get here and start to spout the land, there's no way in Hades that they should be afraid. Uh -huh. Or they don't have any faith by this time. Man, listen, man, where God has brought me from, I'm going to tell you something. I got a faith down in me that I never had before. Right? I'm telling you, I know what God can do, right? And, and listen, listen, we cannot move, we cannot do anything, we cannot go anywhere if we don't have no faith. And, and, and here it is, man. I like this thing. When I was studying this thing this week, you know that you can read the word of God over and over again, and you still miss those little nuggets, those nuances that see in the text. And, and I'm reading this thing, let me see the turn, let me to myself. I wasn't like Jesus that day. I didn't get up and flip the 
me, he said, I have no faith in God. He said, I seen God and you know God sent you there. He said, he said, I went down to the bank and I took out a personal loan. I asked God to do that. But he said, I took out a personal loan to get this project started. This brother gave me the first $25,000. And I went back to the church that next Sabbath and I stood up before the church. I said, yo, look what God is doing. I have a check, a cashier check at that of $25,000 to start this project and get this thing done. And believe me or not, y'all, money started to pour down into that church from two or three people, $10,000, $5,000, $10,000. This ain't come from the outside source. It came from the inside. Watch this out with a church of 40 people. It was four people that started that project. And God said something to me then. That God
And then all, I mean, chapter 14, verse 1, and then all the congregation raised a loud cry. Yeah. And the people wept that night. Not because of the faith of Joshua and Peter, but because of the negative ones. How discouraged the people of God. They, they, now watch this, watch this. They became outraged at Moses now. To the point that they wanted to replace him. Oh, no, I'll be quiet now. I want to talk to you. He said, come on. He said, and all the congregation raised aloud and they cried and the people wept that night. Verse number two. And all the people of Israel did what? And Moses and them. The whole congregation said to them, Would that we have died in the name of Egypt? Or would that we have died in the wilderness? Number verse number three. Watch this. Watch the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword, or our wives and our, our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? Verse number four. And, and they said to one another, Watch this. Let us choose a leader and go back to teach you. Oh, thank you, Jesus, right here. See, watch this, watch this. When, when God is at work and when things are not going our way. See, I'm, I'm, I'm just crazy enough to know now, God, and it's okay with me. I don't, I don't care how well you can pastor, how well you can preach, what expertise you got. Some people just ain't going to like you. And guess what? I know some of y'all just don't like it. Come on, say amen. And don't be looking at some watches. We even go falling up the call to prayer. You need to be able to preach it out here. See, y'all, y'all don't choose now. I got faith in God. My faith is in God, not in man. Now. I'm going to preach. I'm going to tell the truth, right? Y'all should be preaching here. Right? You know why? Because you can't control it. That's what's going on. You can't control the man of God, right? And, and what these people did know, watch this. And what the children of Israel did not know? It wasn't it was Moses and Pilate that was fighting against God. Now, now I'm going to my feet here. I'm going to make this last point. I'm going on, right? He said, they said, verse number four, and they said to one another, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Y'all listen, sometimes be honest with you. God can send you all the signs you need to move forward, to go forward, to break the cycle of, 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 of just being stuck in the mud. But guess what? Some of us just love Egypt. We don't want to grow. We don't want to change. Come on, say amen. Are we learning this wrong? And then God is showing me and becoming very of uh, being humble and submissive to God, willing to and to speak and to preach the way God is telling me. Because the truth of the matter is, I'm starting to see some of us don't want to change. I don't care to preach to you blue in the face. If this is how you want to do it, this is how you want to do it. Here it is. I'm going to take my seat. Man. I got to go right now. Verse number five. Then Moses and Aaron, watch this now, got on their faces with all the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, who were among those that spied the land, watch this, tore their clothes, representing they became angry at the congregation. Not because they, 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 he became angry with them, excuse me, because of the lack of their faith. Verse number seven said, and it said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, the land which we pass you to spy out, watch this, is exceedingly good. Do you know what's going on? Two or three is trying to convince a multitude this is the way. God want us to go. Yeah. And the Bible says that Joshua and Caleb ripped their clothes and they was upset. And, and, and as you keep reading now here, I'm getting ready to take my seat. The Bible says that, that, that God present showed up among them. Right? But when God present showed up among them, if, if you go back and study this thing in the original language, y'all know what happened? When God showed up, he started to tell Moses what? All this that I did to them, oh. all this that I showed them, all this that is God's look, I'm getting ready to wreck the house. Yeah. Also, I'm getting ready to flip it upside down. And when God showed up, he didn't show up to mingle with them. He didn't show up to shake hands. 
And Caleb was really the same. I know that we see giants in the land. But yes, we can. I don't care how 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 the mountain may seem. But yes, we can. I don't care what giant that you have in your life right now. Whether it's a giant of depression. Whether it's a giant of oppression. I want you to know today, yes, you can. If, if, if you will just put your trust in God and believe in God and believe that, that God can get you through, I truly believe we can, we can get over it. And I remember recalling the story when Jesus took two fish and, and it's a couple of loaves of bread and fed 5,000. And, and I'm looking at Jesus and how Jesus will take little and how he will multiply. The truth of the matter is, church, do we have the faith to go where God is sending us? Yes, we can. We can do anything we want if we put our minds to it and if we put God before us, we can get the job done. And that is what I say to us in 2019. As we plan and lay our plans before the Lord, and as we will go and as we will come, I want you to know we're going to get tough, going to get rough, the wind is going to blow. Yes. The thunder is going to roll and the light is going to flash. It ain't going to be an easy ride. Right? Going to be some days when we disagree. Going to be some times that we're going to dislike each other. Going to be some moments when we want to quit. Going to be some times that we're going to stop coming to church. But when you start to fall out that, I want you to remember. Yes, we can. We can, we can overcome all of that if we just go put our faith in God and trust the master plan. Ephesus, as we move forward in 2019, I want you always to remember, yes, we can. God bless you. God keep you till we meet again. Let's stand for benediction. Master, thank you. Thank you, God. Even when we cannot trust you, God, I've learned to trust you. Thank you for faith. See why you told Peter not be. I pray that your faith fell not. Because the devil can get all faith he got us. I know the task wasn't easy for the children to find out. I know they seen some things that they disliked. They was afraid. They were scared. They didn't see how they was going to win the battle. <clears throat> but that's exactly what faith does. Faith don't need no assurance. Because it all leads to you, because you will get us through it. Now, God, I ask that you be with your people. God, they may not go over to start a land, but there are some giants in their lives. There are some things going on within them, Lord, that they may sometimes feel defeated. They don't know how they're coming out. I don't know how they're going to win. But let them know, God, if they put their faith in you, they can make it. We can conquer, we can win the fight through Jesus Christ. Now, God, I pray that you electrify us with your spirit. We need you. Guide us, lead us, protect us. Put your blanket of love and mercy around us. And let us know you will never leave us or forsake us, regardless of what situation we are in. And God, I pray for boldness for 2019. 
But I know there'll be some disagreements down the road. Because I know the enemy is real. But I ask that you give me the fight I need. To stand on your word. Don't let me move on Mary David's merit. But only Jesus alone. Please, this is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.